Hi everyone. I've received uh, several questions recently about stacked macros, so I thought I'd whip up a quick video tutorial on how to make a simple multi-mode filter. And let's start by adding an empty macro, and inside I'm going to create a Pro52 filter and some knobs to control the pitch cutoff and the resonance. And let's cut those knobs and put them outside of the structure, and you'll see why in just a moment. We're actually going to use these knobs to control several different filters. And we'll rename the inputs to P and Res, and connect them to the appropriate spots um, in the structure here. And finally, let's create a, another input to be the audio input to the filter, and then connect the output of the filter to the output of the macro. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually make filters visible. And let's turn off the label, mark it visible, and what that'll do is show you the frequency response of that filter. Okay, so let's duplicate that. And we're going to go into the structure and delete the Pro 52 and add a ladder filter in its place. And we'll use the uh, four pole output of the ladder filter once we're done connecting everything here. And we'll make that one visible as well. And duplicate it again. And this time we're going to delete the ladder filter and add a multi-mode four-pole low-pass filter. And hook it all up again. it visible. And we'll just create um, one more filter. Let's create a high pass filter for a little variation. The other three we've made so far have all been low pass filters. And connect to the high pass output. Okay, so let's take a look at this on the panel. And, as usual, everything's a mess here, so let's rearrange everything for a minute. Uh, looks like I actually forgot to turn the last macro visible, so let's do that real quick. Or the last filter visible, the macro is visible, but... Okay. And, as you can see, uh, the visible filter spaces are just blank right now. That's because they're inactive. It's kind of an annoying feature, but we can change that simply by making them active. So let's go back into the structure. Uh, just add them all together and send them to the output, which is obviously not how we're going to leave things, but for now we'll just make everything visible for us and we can take a look at what's going on. All right, so you can see we have our four different frequency responses displayed now. And the uh, three low-pass filters actually respond quite differently. Um, and the high-pass is obviously its own creature altogether. So let's delete that add module. And create a stacked macro. And we're going to delete these four macros we've created and put them all inside the stacked macro structure. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it so only one of these macros is going to be visible at any point in time. So you'll be able to select which macro is active and then the three filters that are not being used will disappear on the display. <clears throat> and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. So let's just take a moment to uh, rename our inputs and connect everything together here. And when we're done, the four outputs from the filter macros are actually going to be um, sent into a switch. And uh, we'll use the switch to turn off the filters that are not active so that they don't take up any CPU Okay, so let's add that switch now. And uh, connect.
connect all of the macros to it. And then we're also going to have the um, switch controlled by another module that will control which macro is visible. So we'll have one macro that, one module that controls the switch and controls which panel element is active in the stacked macro. So to do that, we need to add a panel index module. And you need to mark it always active in the properties. If you don't, it won't work properly. There we go. And now let's make a list. And we're going to use the list to choose our filter. So let's add four elements to the list by using the append button. And rename them so we can have a concept of which filter we're choosing. We got the four pole low pass and the four pole high pass. Okay, now um, we're going to want the values to be from 0 to 3. You can see by default they're uh, 1 to 4, but you can use this section down here to change that using the apply button. And now we're going to use the connect tab to have the list control the switch like so using an internal connection and finally let's just wire everything up in the uh, instrument view here connect it to the output so we can get a visible look at what's going on and once again everything's a mess of course okay so a bunch of stuff to do here. I like to um, get rid of the list labels and turn it into a menu. And then we can actually make the switch uh, invisible altogether, but let's just make sure it's working properly first. So when we choose the first element in the list, it should turn on the first button on the switch and etc. Okay, and they all seem to work, so let's uh, turn the switch off here. Okay, and one last thing I want to do is resize the stacked macro. You can see by default it's taking up uh, more space than we need, and you can do that in the View tab of the Properties. You can change the width and height of the stacked macro. I'm just going to take a guess at what we can do here. That's a little too far. Okay. Now we have our multi-mode filter. So the panel index module that we added to the stacked macro is the module that controls which macro is visible, and it takes values from 0 to x minus 1, where x is the number of macros that are in your stacked macro, and they are um, listed in the order that you created them in. Okay, that's all for now. I hope you guys find this useful.